Welcome to Volume 6 in our series of films covering the lines of the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway. This video covers the Greater Manchester area, with the accent on the steam hauled traffic through the city in the late 1960s, to its demise in August 1968. This was dominated by Stanier's products, the Black 5 and the 8F locomotives, although other types will appear. At the end, rail tours were frequent through the city and surrounding lines. This 8F, 48652, departing Broadfield on the 27th of April 1968, is on one of them. Broadfield closed in 1970, but the site is now passed by steam again, as it is on the Haywood link of the preserved East Lancashire Railway. 48652 is now near Fellsworth, where she is in fine fettle, heading for Droylsden. In this series, we have covered the Trans-Pennine routes, which, when opened in the 19th century, revolutionised travel between Yorkshire and Lancashire, which had previously been only connected by bad roads and canal. Bolton Sheds, 44947, in excellent condition, passes with an empty, unfitted coal wagon train bound for the pits of Yorkshire. The two stations of Manchester Victoria and Exchange was a mecca for enthusiasts to see Trans Pennine workings and services to the Lancashire coast. 44874 passes Exchange running into Victoria in June 1968. Through workings use the centre roads between platforms 11 and 12 and eastbound trains face the 1 in 47 miles platting bank for which banking engines were provided if necessary. Fowler tender fitted for a 521 of Agecroft shed is running light off mass platting westbound. Its shed was on the Berry and Wigan line, northwest of the city. 44949 is approaching the banking engine siding. Newton Heath shed usually covers these duties. Bolton's Derby built Black 5 44802 runs into Victoria from Red Bank carriage sidings, whilst heading east, tender first is the now preserved 48773 with 11 loaded coal wagons. The Berry Line trains, now served by the Manchester Metro Tram Services, were worked by two-car, 1,200-volt DC side contact third rail sets. Running alongside one of them is 44891, which will collect a couple of coaches, one an XLMS porthole stop example, and the other a BR Mark I. Another Black 5 heads a parcels train to Cheetham Hill sidings. Parcels traffic, which was a lucrative source of income for British railways at that time, is now very much reduced. One of Patrickoff's standard class 5s is tender first up Miles Platting at a fair pace. Another 1200 volt DC ferry train service, this time in the new corporate blue livery. Patricross Caprotti 73125 is approaching from Red Bank with empty parcel stock, which includes a beautiful example of a travelling post office vehicle. Now at the west end of Victoria Station, looking towards number 12 platform, Ivat Mogul 46406. LMS built in December 1946 eases up to the banking siding. A 
westbound freight passes exchange. Passing Deal Street signal box is 73045 with empty stock for the 8.28 a.m. Victoria to Scarborough, which it will haul on Saturday the 5th of August 1967. The train is viewed from Exchange Station, which had been opened by the London and North Western Railway in 1884 and gave them some independence from the L&Y. It would close in 1969. 73073 emerges from the cavernous depths to run light to Patrick Ross Shed. Patrick Ross Shed had been modernised by the LMS in the 1930s and serviced engines from Exchange Station, principally from the Lancashire and North Wales coast. By 1968, the allocation here was mainly standard fives of both Walsharts and Capotti versions. 73128, one of the Capotti variety, comes from the coaling plant onto the shed roads. Seven three zero one one arrives at Patrickroff on recently rebalasted track, which compares with the compacted ash, cinders, and clinker formation that covers the shed area. The engine has a replacement smoke box door number plate and crudely painted nine H in place of a shed plate, which presumably has gone walkabouts to someone's collection. But a year earlier, the 8th of September 1966, cameraman Chris Noel was en route into exchange approaching Salford when the same engine 73011 was running light alongside his train from Patrickroft. Here the original number and shed code plates are still affixed. There is time for a discussion between the crews of both engines as they approach Salford LNY station. The station was on the LNY route to Bolton. There was no platform on the London and North Western route. With Trellfalls Brewery as a backdrop, 73160 arrives at Exchange to collect two parcels vehicles on the 5th of August 1967. An 8F trundles past towards Deal Street Box with some low-sided wagons. Seven three one five nine next, heading empty stock through Exchange Station en route to Victoria. Seven three one three three shunts good stop from one side of exchange to the other.
exchange was linked to Victoria by Platform 11, which in 1929 was joined to Exchange's Platform 3 to form the longest continual platform in Europe at 745 yards in length. This is the backdrop for assaults of Type 2 diesel departing along the platform towards Exchange. Lostock Hall's 45345 passes westward before Rose Grove's Swindon built 8F 48410 emerges into the light by Victoria East Box and climbs round the curve towards Cheatham Hill. On the 4th of December 1965, the RCTS ran the Jubilee Commemorative Rail Tour. Jubilee 45654 Hood is arriving past exchange from Liverpool two and a half minutes early on six LMS coaches. This train was followed by four 5596 Bahamas from Crewe with eight BR Mark 1s. But due to car problems, the first one apparently had only known the route as far as Warrington, this train arrived 25 minutes late. Joining up the two trains, the special now of 14 coaches and double-headed departed vigorously for York. Due to an oversight, one of the LMS coaches had been marshalled without gangway adapters to the BR vehicles. Therefore, the buffet car could not be reached by the Liverpool participants. This was corrected at York, so takings in the buffet went up considerably on the return journey. The environs of Victoria and Exchange saw plenty of last day specials in July and August 1968. This is double four treble eight traversing number 13 platform to turn on the Mars Platting Triangle before heading a Roche Valley special to Southport from platform 14 on the 21st of July. Now, 45305 at the east end of Victoria Station. Sent to Drapers of Hull for scrapping, she was only one of 720 steam locomotives to be saved there by Mr. Draper himself. And as of the year 2003, she has again returned to steam from running in the 1980s. The 4th of August 1968 saw nine different engines pass through Victoria. Pairings for the SLS special saw 44871 and 44894 on the first train. A comparison in liveries can be seen. 44871 in unlined black and 44894 is fully lined out.
they made a stirring departure up Mars Platting Bank en route to Huddersfield. The second SLS special had 44874 and 45017. They are seen at Mars Platting, taking the line to Staleybridge. Seven was the oldest Black 5 still in service on August the 4th, 1968, having been built in May 1935. 44874 was 10 years younger. Back at Mars Platting, the standard Class 5 has climbed out of Victoria with the assistance of a sister engine, 73157. The descent of Mars Platting into Victoria was probably harder than climbing for drivers, especially with unfitted freights. This one is of gigantic proportions, captured on film by cameraman George Woods in early 1968, behind two 8Fs, 48335 and 48046. There was one severe runaway on New Year's Day 1936, when an LNY-080 lost control at the top of the bank by not stopping at the notice board there to pin down brakes. It was signalled into number 14 platform, where it demolished three carriages travelling at least 60 miles per hour. Amazingly, only nine passengers were slightly injured. Rather shocked though, one would think. at the end, somewhere in the distance. On the same day, 45202 of Newton Heath takes out parcel stock from the Berry Line platforms in a cloud of steam. Two six four tanks were often to be seen in Victoria in the mid 1960s. In fact, up to 1967. This is Stanier four two six five six on another parcels working. Two six four tanks were allocated to Newton Heath Shed, the largest on the old Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway. The later Fairburn examples were also allocated here, such as 42087, which was here for two years between 1964 and 1966. Ginties and crabs were also shedded here in 1965. 42938 is the crab, and on another siding, 47681, the last numerically in the class, and one of the few built by the LMS, this one at the ex-LNY works at Horwich.
The famous Red Bank empty stock train from Newcastle produced all sorts of pairings. Here, K1, 62,007, pilots a Black 5 through Newton Heath Station. And, up to 1967, it was not unusual to find a Wakefield B1 on the shed, having worked over the Pennines. This is the now preserved 61306. Six one three zero six was eventually the last B one in service. She was withdrawn from Low Moor Shed in September nineteen sixty seven. Probably only the first A2 Pacific to ever visit Newton Heath Shed was 60528 Tudor Minstrel. Her presence was to work a rail tour north from Manchester to Carlisle. However, with the failure of the rostered A4 from Carlisle to Edinburgh, Tudor Minstrel continued on to Edinburgh with the tour. The tour date was the 23rd of April 1966. The Ivert Class II moguls had an association with Newton Heath from 1948. At the end of steam, several were still in use here. 46437 served here for 11 years from 1956. 46417 only had six months at the shed, but had probably visited often from other sheds like Berry and Bolton. The class were very useful on empty stock turns around Manchester. 46411 was one of the class built by the LMS, the first 20 coming into traffic before nationalisation. The Ivets were also used as banking engines on Miles Platting Bank. They were obviously much preferred on this job than the XLMY Class A 060s with open cabs. Sitting on one in Victoria and the tender first running was no joke in the cold winters. This one is doing duty as a shed pilot, moving coal wagons for the coaling plant. Their end came at Newton Heath in 1967. 46443 is towed with two black fives off the shed, but would survive the cutter's torch via Woodham's of Barry. In July 1965, Newton Heath received an allocation of four Britannias. 70,017 Arrow was one of them. Their duties regularly took them on parcels train over the Stanage route to Leeds. Arriving on shed at Newton Heath is 70,004 William Shakespeare that had the distinction of regularly working the Golden Arrow train in the 1950s while at Stewart's Lane. She had also put in an appearance at the Festival of Britain in 1951. Distinguished, but for all the wrong reasons, was 70,026 Polar Star, an Edgeley engine at this time. 
She had derailed at Milton near Didcot in November 1955 on a Treherbert to Paddington excursion with a loss of 11 lives. 70,021 Morningstar reverses off the turntable to the shed. She was one of Newton Heath's allocated engines. The four involved were transferred away in July 1966. 70,021 was no stranger to Manchester. She had been one of the five allocated to Trafford Park in the summer of 1958 for working the St Pancras Expresses out of Central. The largest allocation at Newton Heath were the Black Fives. This one stands ready to go off shed and making a good job of polluting the area. 45203 backs towards the shed buildings with a refilled tender of large coal, leaving the rubbish and slack at the back. Using three to four tons a day, this usually meant that the coal at the rear of the tender never got used up. engine 45202 trying to get a grip of matters on the often far from dry and usually oily rails on the motive power depots. Note also the connecting rod is fluted while the coupling rod is a flat section. Or 910, which was 10 years younger than the previous pair of Black Fives, has all rods of the fluted variety. The Black Fives lasted to the closure of Newton Heath to steam in June 1968. This one, in deplorable external condition, is being shunted by D2858, one of 20 shunters built in 1960 and 61 by the Yorkshire Engine Company with 170 brake horsepower Rolls-Royce engines and fitted with hydraulic transmissions. It was withdrawn in February 1970. 44781 is on the turntable. Unknown at this time was the fact that she would be paired with 44871 on the famous 15 Guinea Special of the 11th of August 1968. Then it would be purchased by the Columbia Film Corporation for a starring role dressed up as a Malayan locomotive in the film The Virgin Soldiers. Although Columbia Pictures were then happy to sell it, and the five coaches for £3,500 for preservation, BR put an end to that idea by wanting £5,000 to re-rail it. <laughs> Having climbed up from Mars Platting, this grimy 8F, the cleanest part being the loco lab, passes Newton Heath Shed with 16-ton steel-bodied mineral wagons and heads towards Rochdale. Patrick Ross, 48267, gets away with wagons from Moston Exchange sidings, the other side of Newton Heath Station. She passes by the X, L and Y signal box, originally built in 1898 but extended in 1910, that controlled the junction here with its 90-lever frame. The now preserved 8F 48773 climbed steadily past the box in the summer of 1968. The box closed in June 1976. The bracket signal had colour light signals on the two main semaphore doors used when the semaphores went into the off position. but welcome guest to the scene on the 28th of September 1983 was Midland Compound 1000 running light past Mars Platting Junction Box en route to Newton Heath Shed. She had worked over from York to Manchester on a private party special.
afternoon his shed was turned over to a diesel maintenance depot at the end of steam and parts of the old steam shed were used. Number a thousand is serviced here in surroundings a lot cleaner than we have previously seen. As she moves off, the background where once the signal box and station stood has changed considerably in 15 years. Finally, the Midland compound climbs past the depot, returning to York via Rochdale. The hooped bridge over St Mary's Road is prominent, now painted yellow. Fifteen years earlier, that had not been thought of, as Bolton's 44802 runs by towards it. Passing through the arches of the bridge are 44949 and 73069 on an enthusiast special in the summer of 1968. Heading off the bridge towards Newton Heath on the 15th of November 1968, yes, three months after the end of BR Steam, comes 5596 Bahamas running from Berry to Dinting. The LNY signal box was still in use then, of course. The city of Manchester also had a trolley bus system up to the end of 1966, and railway enthusiasts would see them operating around the city centre when moving from the main line stations. The trolleys were operated jointly by the Manchester Corporation Red Buses and Ashton Underline Corporation Blue and Cream liveried vehicles. The services ran out as far as Staley Bridge. Manchester was also served by the Ship Canal Railway. The company was incorporated in 1894 and ran from Manchester and south of Docks to Ellesmere Port. The railway therefore had over 200 miles of track and served many industrial locations and exchanged traffic with the mainline companies at 12 locations. The system had around 90 steam engines over the years. These views at Trafford Park shows number 64, a Hudswell Clark product of which this manufacturer made up about two thirds of the steam fleet.
This was once a familiar sight in the dock area, where a ship canal locomotive would cross the roads in the docks, signalled by a shunter. The railway once had seven locomotive sheds. These 1962 views at Mode Wheel Road show the biggest of them, and there were extensive workshop facilities here also. The running shed had three roads with pits and had an allocation of about 30 engines. Number 79, one of the long tank versions of the canal class engines, shunts BR coal wagons. Number 67, built in 1937, is shunting the more usual Manchester Ship Canal five-plank open wagons. Over the period 1894 to 1970, the company owned 6,700 wagons, mainly of this type, and also mainly second-hand from the big four railway companies. Number 39 brings a train into number 9 dock. Dieselization eventually had to take place and in 1962 the company obtained 15 diesel mechanical units of 204 horsepower from their lifelong supplier Huswell Clark. This is D14. By 1966 however, a further 18 diesel hydraulic 34 ton 255 horsepower Sentinel 040s were purchased. DH24 shunts at Trufford Park Industrial Estate. Number 64 continues shunting at the same location. A survivor of the big tank Hudswell Clarks was number 67, seen earlier in the program at Mowdwheel Shed. She returned to the system on the 14th of September 1969 for a rail tour around the Trafford Park area. She was assisted by ex Y Pug 51218, built at Horwich in 1901. The tour attracted 150 enthusiasts and started at Trafford Wharf, Manchester, and eventually reached the farthest point possible at that date, Caddishead, just next to Earlham. The date was chosen to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the opening of the railway.
set off and cross the swing bridge into the dock estate. The train was made up of ten open wagons with five bales of straw in them for seating. Two brake vans were included, one of which served refreshments. The tour occupied nine hours of running and covered about 34 miles. Various other manufacturers were served by the Manchester Ship Canal system, notably on the Trafford Park estate, and had their own motive power. This is Andrew Barclay, number 1964 of 1929, of Brown and Paulson's. Another company was Procter and Gamble. They used fireless locomotive, Andrew Barclay, 1938, of the year 1927. Connected to the Lancashire and Yorkshire line from Victoria to Staleybridge near Park Station was Stewart Street Power Station. The last steam engine to work here was Hudson Clark number 1672 of 1937, the year of King George VI's coronation, and after that event it was originally named. Here it is in steam for a visit by the World Railway Circle. After coaling, it departs, carrying its passengers in a rather unorthodox position down to the corporation sidings alongside the main line to Victoria and then returns over Claytonville Viaduct which spans the River Medlock. We once again return to the British Railway scene in Manchester. A brush type 4, heads an oil train climbing out of Victoria banked by a black 5, 44884, spending its last six months at Noon Heath after years at Carlisle Kingmore. returns to Victoria for its next duty. After the end of steam in 1968 and the early days of the diesel takeover, the corporate blue era reigned. The Mars Platting pilots were type 2s and freight had English electric type 4s at their head. Local DMUs now climbed Mars Platting instead of the 264 tanks and Ivat 2s. The Berry Line Electrics still carried on from a revamped Berry platform side of Victoria Station. Some tracks now removed. The Manchester to Ferry line was electrified from 1916. In 1959, the class 504 units took over from the original L&Y time-expired five-car sets. Situated near Woodlands Road Station was the ICI works at Blakely and rail connected. It was shunted from the exchange sidings to the works by the Lady Armadale, an 060 side tank built by Hunslet in 1898 for the Manchester Ship Canal Railway. There it was numbered 14 and given the name St. John. Dieselization of the Ship Canal Railway made her redundant and was offered for sale. The Dye Stuffs Division of ICI bought her and named the locomotive the Lady Armadale. In this view, we notice a car driving mirror on the cab side that allowed the driver to see around the locomotive in the busy works yard.
The mirror is better seen in this view as coal wagons are shunted for the boiler house. The second engine here was Isabel, a Hawthorne Leslie product of 1919. She had once been called the Lady Armadale, witnessed by the saddle tank mark for the longer nameplate. She also sported an extension to her chimney. The Lady Armadale had one of its former number 14 number plates on one side of the cab only. The other side had the works plate. The maroon livery was that of ICI. When on the ship canal railway, it was all over black. She prepares to push coal empties to the exchange sidings about a mile away and steeply graded. Rail traffic here ceased in 1968 and the engine preserved by the Warwickshire Railway Society based on the Severn Valley Railway. On the main line near Crumpsall, another 504 unit passes a freight that has been looped. That is headed by 28Fs. The electrified 1200 volt DC side contact third rail was unique to the Manchester Ferry Service. The 504 units worked to bury Bolton Street until March the 14th, 1980, from when they were diverted into Bury Interchange Station near the site of Bury Knowsley Street. A two car unit arrives at Bury Bolton Street, now the headquarters of the East Lancashire Railway. Departing Bolton Street and its associated South signal box is another two-car unit. The link to Knowsley Street and Haywood diverges away to the right of the picture and has now been reopened by the East Lanks Railway. Arriving at Berry Knowsley Street from Castleton in 1969, the vastness of this station can be seen. It became unstaffed in September 1969 and closed completely in October 1970. A station was opened on this site in May 1848. It was renamed Berry Marketplace in 1866 and again to Knowsley Street in 1888. The Lancashire and Yorkshire built a substantial goods warehouse here for the cotton trade. Heading eastwards towards Castleton and passing the connection up to Bolton Street in 1968 is Black 5 44947 on a Class 7 unfitted freight. On the 26th of November 1966, the Manchester Rail and Travel Society ran a rail tour to Bury behind Stanyard 264 tank 42644. After taking water at Bolton Street, the tour continued to Bake Up. This is view approaching Bake Up after leaving the tunnel and junction of the line from Rochdale. The island terminus was opened in October 1852. It would close a week later on the 5th of December.
Right today, on the closure weekend, another farewell special arrived at Baker, the Rosendale Forester. 42644 was again used with 46437. The yards here were once very busy with coal, wool and raw cotton and the corresponding outgoing products from the local mills. There was also a four road loco shed up to 1954. Back at Berry Bolton Street, 42644 comes off the previous week's MRTS rail tour. The Stania 264 tank then ran light engine up the Haywood Link to give way for a change of motive power. This change was in the form of two Jinties, 47383 and 47202, both shedded at Newton Heath. 47202 was fitted with condensing gear from the days when it was allocated to Cricklewood, London and worked over the metropolitan widen lines under the city. Although 47202 was scrapped within weeks of this tour, it would still be possible to see 47383 at Berry Bolton Street again, for after storage at Newton Heath, she went to work at Williamsthorpe Colliery and from there entered preservation, again on the Severn Valley Railway. The two Jinties worked the tour train back to Stockport. A mile and a half east of Nolsey Street was the Heath Bridge branch. An Ivor II mobile is seen shunting at the paper mills at the end of the branch. The paper mills were owned by Yates Duxbury, and from the outset in 1894, the firm used small steam shunting engines. In 1944, this Andrew Barclay of 1904 build arrived and is seen heading out of the North Mill, or Number 2 Mill. Coal was brought into the mills and also baled wood pulp and china clay. Outward traffic was paper products. The little Barclay had worked for Clay's Wagon Works at Long Eaton, Derbyshire before coming to Heathbridge. She also survives in preservation. Besides the Bay Cup line north of Bury, there was a line to Accrington, diverging at Stubbins Junction. A Black 5 and a Crab 42942 approached the junction southbound in 1966. This was a rail tour to Gould, actually seen in volume one of this series, to take a Crab the whole way from Liverpool to Gould over the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway. The tour is again seen near Cliviger, on the climb to Copy Pit. Accrington had been reached from Manchester via Bury and Stubbins Junction in 1846. 
This line eventually connected up with the East Lanx railway line from Preston and Blackburn. 42644 on the LCGB Rosendale Forester Tour on the 3rd of December 1966 departs for Burnley over the S shaped 21 arch viaduct east of the station. The tour train is seen again after reversal at Rose Grove, Burnley, in the late cold evening sun of this December day. The signals are clear for the North Lancashire Loop line via Padium. Filmed from the same spot in the summer of 1968, 45156, once named Ayrshire Yeomanry, runs light engine past Rose Grove West Box towards the shed, seen behind the locomotive. Four five zero nine six enters the shed. She was shedded here for only five months, from May to August 1968. But over the years, many locomotives have been allocated or visited the shed. This was opened by the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway in 1899, one of their 32 major sheds, and had been given the number 23. Four five three eight two had been here since August 1966. She is being turned on the 60-foot vacuum turntable installed by the MMS. It was primarily a freight depot, but passenger work was important in the 1950s, with turns to London and Carlisle, as well as Wake Street's turn to the Lancashire coast. This 8F is passing through Rose Grove Station in the down direction, that is, towards Burnley Central and Poppy Pit, with coal empties. The signal box is Rose Grove East, and to the right is the up yard. With up and down hump yards at Rose Grove, with a capacity of over 1,300 wagons, it was a very busy place. The main traffic was coal and the corresponding returning empties. The remaining steam engines left in the summer of 1968 had a hand in this traffic. 45392 is taking empty coal wagons to the down yard. F passes Rose Grove West Box on a Burnley to Wire Dock coal train, formed of 21 ton two door wagons at a fair pace. Steam went out on Lancashire and Yorkshire lines with quite a flourish in August 1968, even though the locomotives were run down and becoming uncared for. This series has covered most of the lines operated by the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway. This eventually stretched from Liverpool to Goole across the Pennines. More coal is hauled westward on this particular L and Y route. It still exists, but through Rose Grove the track is just double. All the rest, the shed and the yards, is under the M65 motorway. The men who made the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway would just never have believed it. <laughs>